B. We are going to pay this. We are going to mutate this for the two cheap, cheap costs. Does Cup Warden have... It has more health, right? So I can... Another Cup Warden. Ooh, I don't need another Sentinel's Eyes. We'll discard that. Another Staggering Insight. I don't really want that. Uh, yeah, 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 it has more health. All right, so we will throw that down and at least turn it into a 5-7. Get us our two little kitty cats. I guess we gotta be worried about milling ourselves here, huh? What's up, everybody? My name's Chance, and this will be the third time I'm recording this. <laughs> Today, uh, we're going to be playing Dovin's Mutants. Dovin's Flying Artifact Mutants. Um, it's a fun deck. <laughs> you you minus one of the Dovin, you get your color of the Thopter artifact creatures down with flying, you get to gain life, and then you mutate onto those creatures with, you know, your Cub Wardens, your King Caesars, your Dream Tails, and your Sea Dashers to add in value or draw cards or create little cat tokens, you know? Around this uh, kooky, quirky combo, which actually works pretty well, uh, we have Mace of the Valiant, which is going to get plus one, plus one counters put onto it, charge counters, if you will, um, put onto it whenever you play more creatures onto the battlefield. And then, of course, you stack this onto one of your mutate creatures, and it just does a whole lot. Or even if you just throw it on a silly little Thopter and give that Thopter staggering insight, it, uh, it tends to smash face. Now, alongside this mutate deck we have here, we have uh, a bottom end of like Azorius Flyers type deck. So we have Healer's Hawk, Skycat Sovereign, Staggering Inside, Sentinel's Eyes to really boost up the flying Thopters and all that that we're getting down with Dovin. And we have Baby Godzilla to help our mutate out. Alongside that, we have Karametra's Blessing, which is going to protect our creatures from being destroyed or targeted or any of that kind of stuff. We have Dovin's Veto to try to counter the board wipes and the big planeswalkers that we just don't want to see. And then down here on the top, we have Time Wipe, which allows you to return that mutated creature, you know, the one that has the most stacks on it, back to your hand, and then destroy everything else. So you get creatures back, and then you get to play down, you know, them and sort of keep... I won't say tempo, but keep your board state where you're erasing your opponents, right? Anyways, that's going to pretty much do it for the deck tech or deck breakdown. Uh, make sure you're watching all the way through the video, of course, as always, because we have pro tips that come up throughout the matches as I see info that I think, you know, would be pertinent for people playing the deck or just new people playing Magic in general. So, you know watch all the way through to the end and then at the end we're going to be doing a deck tech wrap up where i show you different options different routes you can play with this deck to have it you know feel differently or if you don't have all the cards you know whatever it may be if you're looking for a different little bit of spice anyways without further ado <laughs> we're gonna go and hop right celine or saline it's, it's probably just celine <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll keep it. Two baby Godzillas. It'll at least make our mutate creatures cost that much less, right? Ozolith in a mono white deck? Probably not mono white, right? I actually don't want another land. I think we're fine as is, and even with the three that we have now, we can get everything in hand down, so. Orzov. So they're probably playing some Pride Mates, yeah? Alright, well let's run out of Baby Godzilla, see if it can if it can live. Yeah, beautiful. Now am I going for the mutate on a baby Godzilla or am I just getting down another baby Godzilla? I think we're getting down another baby Godzilla. Right, I can mutate this. But I'm bum, but I'm bum. We might actually discard the the Sentinel's Oz here, because we can always get that back, right? And land. Uh, over. <laughs> over gives us more damage, but it gives it less life, so. A little bit of a weird situation. But hey, our opponent's not doing anything so far, so that's that's always good news. And we got a Dovin's Veto. 
Interesting. Bloodthirsty aerialist. Well, if you're going to be taken to the skies, I guess I am as well. So this only costs us two to mutate. Which means if we do mutate it... Am I throwing it here or am I throwing it here? I guess I'm throwing it here. Let's just keep all the mutates on one stack, I guess. Get rid of that land. I guess get rid of that land. Over. And this way we'll have matter for Dovin's Veto, if need be. We also have Staggering Insight, which we can go and throw down. But I think I'd rather keep up Dovin's Veto, protect our creatures a little bit. We probably need some removal now that I'm looking at it, right? And there's Dovin himself. I can mutate this Dreamtail Heron down. Uh, I think I'm, I'm leaving Dovin's Veto up. We'll see. We'll see if I live to regret it or not. Alright, what you got for me, Selene? A Mortify, I don't regret it. I don't regret it in the least bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, and a Karametra's Blessing. That means we, we gotta get something down on you right now, right? So we can do Staggering Insight and still have mana for Karametras. We can do Staggering Insight plus Sentinel's Eyes and still have mana for Karametras. We'd also just mutate a Sea Dasher onto our Dream Tail plus Sentinel's Eyes plus Karametras. I think I'd rather have the life gain. <laughs> So we'll go here. Uh, we could also just do this instead of Sentinel's Eyes. That's that's probably fine, actually. We're just we're just a mutating monster. <laughs> oh, Cub Warden. Yes, that's that's what we wanted. That is the the good sauce. I guess I'm getting rid of Dovin's Veto. I'm not holding up man for Dovin's Veto so long as I can help it. And a healer sock. Nah. Let's admit it. It's bottom tier. Oh, we drew into another land. I didn't realize we could cast another land, but apparently we can. If we can, I say why not. <laughs> we could cast Cub Warden down, but I think I'd rather rather wait on that. So let's just one, two. Oh, it's only two? Wow, Sinzel's Eyes is really cheap to get back. For some reason, I was thinking it was three. Oh, well. Um, yeah, get in there. You, you do that. Six damage. Draw me three cards. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. In turn. All right. So far, so good. What do you got for me, Celine? Celine. What's, what's that famous actress's name? Celine Dion or something like that? Anyways. They're not going to attack? Well, I'll be. I'll be. We are going to pay this. We are going to mutate this for the two cheap, cheap cost. Does Cup Warden have... It has more health, right? So I can... Another Cup Warden. Ooh, I don't need another Sentinel's Eyes. We'll discard that. Another Staggering Insight. I don't really want that. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. it has more health. All right, so we will throw that down and at least turn it into a 5-7. Get us our two little kitty cats. I guess we gotta be worried about milling ourselves here, huh? I never thought I'd see the day. We also want to keep up one mana for Karametras, so I could go ahead and play down our Dovin Grand Arbiter here. Yeah, let's get down Dovin. I mean, it is Dovin's Mutants, after all. I ain't gonna not play Dovin when you Your have Dovin's Mutants. Celine, they've seen enough. Comedy of I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why Dovin pushed him over the edge, but... How to pronounce my name? Uh, <laughs> uh, isn't that a question for the ages? Don't don't feel bad. Everybody always gets it wrong. It's Doctor Spillikin, and I know it's it's missing an L. That's that's the thing. 
Give me one second. Uh, Verbal, gonna be our next foe with this deck. We get to go first. I'm gonna keep the hand. I see the Mace of the Valiant. And honestly, I just wanna try it out. You know what I mean? You can't you can't blame me. Um, but yeah, Dr. Spillikin. It is supposed to have two L's. Like where the one L is, it's supposed to have two L's. But eh, it's, a, it's a long story. Um, just for, for a frame of reference, I guess. Uh, a Spillikin for anybody interested, I suppose. Do I want more land? I mean, I do, but I don't want Castle Vantress unless unless I have an island, right? I mean, Castle Vantress could come in handy. But yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, if you to reference anybody that's out there watching interested to know, uh, a Spillikin is the, the black stick in pickup sticks. You know, the stick you use to pick up the sticks with? That's, that's what it is. Um, so not, not even a huge, like, great backstory to my name. It was, uh... I want to get staggering inside down, but it already has that. So maybe Sea Dasher is better than saving the staggering for a creature that doesn't have uh, what's it called. Of course, if we mutate the King Caesar or the Huntmaster, like or whatever you want to call it, then we're we're getting extra value. Uh, oh no 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 no, we're we're doing Mace. We're doing Mace. Right right right. Because I, I want to try Mace out. So like you you can't try it out if you never play it down, right? And that's that's one of the problems why I never tried out Mace in the past. I was like three mana to get it down, and then it also requires you to to do something to make it bigger, right? Like getting more and more and more creatures down. And then you also have to, what is with the, all these goddamn bloodthirsty hairless? Anyways, but then you also have to pay three mana to put it on something. So like when it first came out, I was, I was kind of hyped, but then re-reading over the numbers, I was like super depressed about it. I was like, oh, ugh. <laughs> but now, you know, I'm back to like, oh, whatever, could be all right. So I guess we're mutating this guy down so their bloodthirsty aerialist can't get through. That did put a counter on Mace, yeah? No? Huh. <laughs> I thought it did. Because if it was a creature entering the battlefield, or is it technically not a creature entering the battlefield? Is it technically a creature, like, is mutate its own effect onto a battlefield? That's going to be a little bit of a yikes if Mace... <laughs> if Mace doesn't work with Mutate, I was like, you know, 83% confident that Mace... That Mace would... Yo. Bro. Chill. I don't even... I don't even what did I do to you, Verbal? I <laughs> said, I'm, I'm going to get all my cats down. I'm going to get an oven down. I'm going to get a Bloodthirsty Aerialist down. You bastard. I just keep drawing these staggering insights. Yeah, so I don't I don't think that, that worked. <laughs> we can try it one more time just for just for the little look see. No, it it, it it definitely did not work. Alright, you know what? We're gonna draw all the cards here. We're just gonna draw all the fucking cards. Give them to me. Uh-huh. Ooh, I'm happy about the cub warden. Maybe that'll actually help the mace. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie, Cub Warden was the main card I had in mind when I was thinking of mace, but I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, as long as it works. God damn it. As long as it works with mace, you know, mutate will be fine, but whatever. Verbal, you got me. Anyways, Luby, Loby, Gonna be our next foe. We have a staggering inside, a healer sock, cub warden, and a sea dasher. This is like everything I love the most in this deck. And I'm not gonna lie, I, it's taken me a while to get around to this deck of playing, you know, Azorius, Mutants, this style, I guess. But I really love it. I really love these cards specifically. And I think it's funny that Azorius both has the cards that I find to be. I won't say the most interesting, but up there, you know, up there in the top. And it also has some of the cards that I hate the most. <laughs> it's like the best of both worlds. Now, I'm I'm terrified that they're just going to shock my healer sock. Not going to lie. Up against an it player, it's not looking great. Yeah, okay. You know. You win some, you lose some. I could have wished 
I could have wished. <laughs> I could have went for the C Dasher as well, but not going for the C Dasher there allows me to play the C Dasher here and then play the Cub Warden on the C Dasher. So that was uh, actually we we should really wait and flash that in as well, right? A Lord Dracus, by the way, our opponent might be playing. Is it a uh, mutate? In which case, bravo, you know, and kudos. Especially if they're playing a different version of Is It Mutate than what I played the other day, because that would be interesting to see. So we let the Lord Dracus get in. We're not we're not flashing anything down. Come on, spend your mana, spend your mana, spend your mana. That's okay. <laughs> spend a little bit more mana, will you? You hit two lands there. All right, well, let's see if we can get a C Dasher down. Come on, baby. Yeah. Now, just let... No, 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 no. no. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you win some, you lose some. And uh, I guess we're losing a ton. Uh, am I just throwing down a cupboard and Just, like, in their face? I think so. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever just cast Cub Warden before. That's a little weird. <laughs> he he looks a little naked down there, not having any... <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll just go put my nose in this corner over here. You can play the game by yourself, I guess. I'm just gonna I'm not I'm not gonna shock in a land to put a sentinel's eyes on a creature that might very well just get unsummoned again. <laughs> Loby or Luby, I gotta say, you're making this rather annoying for me. You're joking. <laughs> you're actually fucking kidding me right now, huh? Ah, if I could just hit some land, then I could just Seed Asher onto the Cub Warden. No biggie. I'm, yeah, I'm playing a Sentinel's Eyes on my Cub Warden. So what? You got another bounce spell? Let's see it. Son of a bitch. It was a joke. It was a joke, Loby. Leave me alone. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting bullied. I can't even... <sighs> I can't justify playing Sentinel's Eyes now that I have a Karametra's Blessing that I could potentially play after I play Sentinel's Eyes. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Luby is the the bully in high school. It just comes by and keeps knocking your books into the floor. Like, ha, ah, picking them up, loser. <laughs> Leave me alone, asshole. We're definitely putting a Sentinel's Eyes on our Cub Warden because I'm sick and tired of shit happening to it. <laughs> We're leaving mana for the Karametras. Am I putting a staggering inside? I mean, it already has life gain. And Seed Asher is a more fun version of staggering, if you ask me personally. Right, we're definitely not going over with that one. Uh, Sentinel's Oz, do I have enough? Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Uh, I actually don't need it there, because that guy already has Sentinel's Oz. So we'll take you out. Take you out, I guess. We, we don't have any like reanimation anyway, so nothing to really worry about there. Uh, yeah, and then you're feeling the wrath, baby. Luby, are you ready? Because it's happening. It is happening. They're blocking with the Lord Dracus. You've had it here this whole time. You're not even going to take one hit of damage. You're like, nope. Sorry, my creature's not worth it. Yeah, okay. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. You bounce my shit five fucking times. I'm going to get sick and tired of it. Good game, Luby. Good game. You're about to feel the wrath. Boom, bam. Let's draw two more cards. Uh, okay. I'm not going to say no to two Hunt Master Ligers, because here's the thing. If I can get those two down, our Cub Warden will be banging. Thinking. Hey, yeah, yeah. You take your time. Take your time, you have a good time at that. You go over. You go over. And yes, we could we could really boost up the Mace of the Valiant. But I feel like this is a much, much cooler play, right? Anyways, good game, Luby. Gotta say, you were very annoying to face off against. <laughs> but hey, you can't be upset about picking up the victory in the end. 
Uh, Kuro no Su... We played you. We played you... Yesterday, I want to say? They were playing a, a Solta Mutate deck. And we were playing a Mono Black Mutate. They're still playing Solta Mutate. I, I think that's kind of interesting in Magic. When you get paired up against another like random user, you know, you're not friends or any of that. You get paired up against them and uh like they're still playing the same thing or even if they're playing something different and you're like oh yeah it's cool to see your your take on a different deck you know anyways we're gonna go ahead and get down baby godzilla maybe they remember me as well i'll, I'll give them the hello maybe that'll help jog their memory <laughs> he says paradise druid so yeah I, I think they're sticking to their guns here um are we mutating a sea dasher onto the baby godzilla and if so are we putting sentinel's eyes on there as well or, God, I hate that that mace doesn't work like that. We really got to take that out of the deck. <laughs> or, or maybe knock it back down to one copy, right? Uh, yeah, I think I'm shocking this in. We could go for the Staggering plus the Sentinel's Eyes and just really boost up the Baby Godzilla. But I want to mutate, you know? I want to do this thing. I'm actually going to go under instead of Paradise Druid can't block. Although, I guess... If I'm throwing a staggering inside on it anyways, it's it's fine, right? Huh. And I said Sentinel's Eyes. Um, I forgot Baby Godzilla reduces the cost, so we had the extra mana left over. Draw, 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 draw. This is kind of the nice thing with the deck. Because of the staggerings plus the Sea Dasher Octopi, <laughs> I'm really surprised I got that right on the first go through um you, you get to draw tons of cards which means you're you're rarely ever in that position of getting screwed or flooded you know you're, you're getting everything you're getting literally everything it's hard to get shafted that way i don't know if that's the best word to use there but <laughs> y'all know what i'm what i'm saying um so i do want to get down mace just in general in case we ever do hit the cupboard and i'd like to have mace on the board but you can't pass up double baby Godzilla, you know what I mean? One one baby Godzilla is cute. Two baby Godzillas. Oh my goodness. You're just overloading. I really hate the bouncing shore shark. <laughs> I never think about mutate abilities like going off multiple times and being like, oh yeah, that's I don't, I don't know what that was either. That was some weird, like, dribble there. But, yeah, I always forget Pouncing Shore Shark can proc multiple times. And it's like, wow. Chance, you should really start using your good old noggin. All right. Uh, speaking of using my noggin, this only costs one, two, one. But we know that they're probably mutating onto that and bouncing our creature once more. So uh, I'm very tempted. Actually, yeah, let's do this. Let's get down Mace. If they're just gonna keep bouncing our creatures like again and again and again, isn't Mace fantastic, right? Isn't Mace the place to be? We'll see. I'm a little worried, not gonna lie. A little worried. Because if they mutate another Pouncing Shore Shark... Okay. Well, that's not as bad. I was about to say, another Pouncing Shore Shark is like... Because <laughs> then they're bouncing both of our creatures every single turn. And I, unlike them, don't have any Hexproof on my creatures. Speaking of which, you could run Hexproof, right? In uh, in this deck? You could run a Hexproof creature. I just think all the, the Mono Blue Hexproof creatures are up in the top end. Unfortunately. They're not swinging in. They said... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep it back this turn. I see that you keep swinging in at me, and you currently have more health than me. I don't know how. Uh, so we're trying to get up to four damage if we can, right? This puts it up to two, three, four. Well, we can get there. This only costs one. This costs two. This costs one. Um, so we'd still have one mana left over, which is enough for a healer talk. So yeah, cool beans. Cool, cool beans. I guess we could have also went for the baby Godzilla, but this is all right. This will do fine. Can I? Okay, I can. All right, so we're discarding the Sentinel's Eyes. Oh, thank goodness. I'm glad I was able to figure that one out. 
and that. A little bit of this. Boom, boom. Submit. Cool beans. So, how much are we drawing? Two. Fabled Sentinels. So, are they just going to bounce all my creatures? Because, again, Mesa the Valiant, the more you bounce, the better I get. And if they don't bounce the Healer's Hog, then I can just play Mace onto the Healer's Hog and have it be big? I don't know. Them having an access to Insatiable Hymn of Ages as well, though, is certainly not a great thing. All right, so they're bouncing everything. Bouncy, bouncy, bounce. And now their Dreamtail Heron has Death Touch as well, which is really unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. How many times has this thing mutated? Four fucking times? That's crazy. They hit Hysterics. It's over. Bum, 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 bum. Dovin, now's not the time, buddy. I need you to stay out of the way, basically. Ah, when they bounced my Poliwog, after it got mutated onto, it changes the card art. <laughs> That's a little weird. All right, so we'll get in with the healer's up. And by get in, I mean we'll kill their grazer. <laughs> this is a... I, I want to say it's interesting, but I know as soon as they hit Sterics, like, it's over, you know? We're like, we got to get... We got to get to where we're going faster. Fuck. <laughs> How come they can hit their, their decent mutate targets? But I'm over here looking for a... For a cub warden for days. For days and days and days and days. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Honestly, one of us might end up milling ourselves if I can keep staying healthy. <laughs> like, just keep building up mace. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. As soon as they hit Gem Razor, right, our mace gets destroyed. So, Sultan Mutate definitely. <laughs> They're playing the big turtle. Sultan Mutate definitely wins this matchup, yeah? <laughs> I can't think of how we can even get to that, uh, to that hexproof creature, you know? <laughs> Alright, we'll give him a nice and we'll give him a GG. Kuro, it was fun yesterday. It was fun today. I gotta say, you're you're just a fun foe. Maybe it's Soul Dom Mutate that's just fun for me to play against. But uh, yeah, I'm certainly certainly Pico de Nice. I don't know what Pico is like. I don't know what it actually means. You know, I know Pico de Gallo like it's it's a salsa. But obviously, it's words and like what what do those words mean? The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Uh, so yeah, C Cub Warden, Baby Godzilla, all the stuff I love in life. Uh, yes, I am playing a Castle Ventures first. That's okay. It's all right. It'll be all good. I'm more excited about the Baby Godzilla than I am the Dealer Sock. Can you blame me though? If a, if you had a baby that made that big of an impact when it hit the ground, would you not want to play with it? That took a weird turn. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Anyways, we're getting the Cub Warden down on turn three. You know, that never feels bad. Game, you're really testing me here. Because we have the Cub Warden, so like... I'm not, I'm not getting rid of the Maze of the Valiant, even though this... Uh, I guess I should have gotten rid of the Healer's Hawk there, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I go all which ways on this. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> People always shutting down my fun. Fuck y'all. You, can, you can't just let me have it. You can't just let me have it. 
I want to mutate the C Dasher onto the Healer's Talk, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, if I can go ahead and mutate the C Dasher down just in general. Well, you know what? Never mind, I can do this. Play the Mace, play the Healer's Talk. It'll be alright. Come next turn. Ah, no, I won't. Well, if we get untapped land, I'll be able to play the C Dasher plus the Mace, but we'll have to see. Leave my stuff alone! I hate hateful Idolan decks. Hate them. You know why? Because they play 30,000 copies of removal. Um, well, that is untapped land. That is the untapped land. Is it over? And again, it doesn't build up mace, unfortunately. I guess we should have put mace on the baby cat, right? Ah. It gives us Vigilance, so I guess that's good. A Dovin's Veto, if only, if only I had two mana. To keep my creature alive, it would be beautiful. <laughs> See what I mean? I never play up against a Hatefly Dolan deck that doesn't draw Myers Grasp with, with ease. With so much ease, it makes me jealous. <sighs> ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's okay. I really would like to have... No, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd really like to have mana for Dovin's Veto, but uh, that's all right. I think we already played a land on that last turn anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! I hate Flawed Dolan. This is, this is actually why I hate the decks, too. Because they don't do anything. They just remove your stuff. They just spend a whole game removing your stuff, and then they play one all that glitters, and they're like, huh, I got you. Like, okay. <laughs> sure you did. Sure you did. Hey, looky here. I have some cool plays, too. Boop. Cut off their card draw, at least. Bastard. You little bastard. Uh, we're definitely keeping up mana for Dovin's Veto, okay? As much as I want to just slap that fucking mace on my Cub Warden, we can't. Like, realistically, I can't justify that, knowing very well that our opponent is a, is a removal Andy. You know what I mean? Pico de Nice. Do you have the nice play, though? Do you really have it? You're tapping stuff. You're banishing lighting. I'm Dovin's vetoing. I almost resolved that. I would have been so sad. Get out of here. Your three banishing lights, your two Myers grass, your dead weight. What did I say? What did I say? These motherfuckers have so much removal. <clears throat> and I, I don't necessarily understand it. Like, yeah, sure, it works. With, are you fucking kidding me, game? I need something beside the land. We're definitely holding on to that, though, because it, we, we could pump fake them, right? Do a little juke out, make them think it's something that it's not. I mean, we, we are gaining tons of life, though, so there's that. You're going down to six? Why are you letting us... What? <laughs> I mean, I'll take it, because it allows me to get a healer's hog down and buff up my mace. <sighs> it just seems a little weird. Alrighty, Pico to nice. That's what you get for, for not being nice, for removing all my fun stuff. It's Alucard, going to be our first foe for the day. Uh, it's a little risky, but I am going to keep it. I like, I like where the hand's sitting. And I think I may even... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say I was going to be ballsy and play the Fable Passage into the white mana, but we don't even have to. <clears throat> Excuse me there. <clears throat> but we may want to get the Castle of Antris down, or we Fable Passage into an island. I don't know. Probably just go for the Vantress. Yeah. Oh, okay. A little lovely game. Thank you. Hey, at least both healer hawks survived, though. No, no disfigure hit us, right? <clears throat> I can't play the Skycat Sovereign plus the Sea Dasher, even if I shock in the Hollowed Fountain. So there's no, no reason there. 
think I'd rather have the card draw, honestly. We don't have to worry about playing at instant speed because they don't have any uh, any mana to do anything with, so we'll just swing in as is. And I'm not gonna play any mana until I know for sure. Okay, I was about to say that I don't have any plays, right? So we can go ahead and just enter this tapped. Next turn we'll be at four. We can play the Baby Godzilla plus the Sky Cat Sovereign. District God, our opponent. Alucard, what are you playing, buddy? Also, side note, can I? There we go. Love the the, uh, the sleeves you have rocking here. Just, just by the way. All right, so we're, we're actually pretty good on both sets of mana here. I don't know that it matters too much one way or the other. We'll go ahead and play down the Baby Godzilla as well as the Skycap. Oh, you know what? I messed up there. I should have swung in with my my creatures first to see what I drew. It was a healer's hawk. Well, I was going to play what I played anyways. Hopefully they don't have any board wipe. Leyline Prowler. Alucard. You devious man. Or woman. What are you, uh, what are you trying to do here? We're going to take that three damage because we've healed up a ton. Can I draw something besides some lands? Please and thank you. Um... I mean, we already have a Castle Venture, so getting a Castle Ardenville down isn't a bad course of action, I think. I don't want to get board wiped, right? So I don't want to just commit everything to the board. Let's let's swing in with what we have. You stay back, baby Godzilla. We'll see where we're at. Another land. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fun. We're either going to use uh, Castle Vantry. Well, we can't. We don't have two blue. Well, we can use uh, Sky Cat Sovereign. <laughs> right? Boost it up one more. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that'll be lethal with uh, with what we have on board. So we don't even need the, the mutants. We don't even need Dovin. We're just, we're just being the Azorius Flyers that we were hating on yesterday, huh? We have turned into the things we swore we never would. That's okay. That often comes... <laughs> happens with magic the gathering so uh this is gonna be a gg here right oh no the ley line prowler no 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 but i can play down right right so no blocks and uh yeah we okay alucard g gg i didn't want to say oops because that's that's bm <laughs> pappy jones <laughs> oh i love your name pappy jones All right. I really want Mace of the Valiant to be good. I forgot yesterday we had resolved we were gonna remove it from the deck because it doesn't work with Mutate. Um, in the fact that it doesn't allow you to gain counters on it when you mutate a creature down. So, you know. Are we going for the Baby Godzilla or are we going for just boosting our healer's hawk? Here's the thing, we have a Tom Wipe, right? So we know we're gonna be using this once the board gets crazy. So I think I'd rather invest in Mutate than invest in Auras right now, right? So Baby Godzilla, you you hold down the fort and Healer's Hawk, I don't think you're blocking any anyway. So you just, you just, you know, do your job, heal us up. Bring us that little care package on your chest. Okay then. <laughs> Wanna get to that time wipe sooner rather than later for sure. I gotta take this damage. I hate it, but I got to. It's what needs to be happening. Wow, we are... We're not in a great position. I can mutate the King Caesar down. Thanks to the Baby Godzilla. Am I putting it on the Baby Godzilla or am I putting it on the Healer's Hawk? I think I'm putting it on the Healer's Hawk. Because, you know, life gain and whatnot. That is fantastic, so we're not bouncing that. Uh, I think we're getting rid of Sentinel's Oz. We found it's very easy to bring that one back, so... And then we'll play the Castle Vantress. We can't do anything with it, but it does give us another land, so at least we didn't miss there. Um, are we leaving King Caesar back to defend? Do we think they're going to play a creature bigger than Pelt Collector? Well, there is Yorvo. That would be super unfortunate to see. Um, we need five mana for time wipe. If I swing in, we're going up to 13. They swing in. I can't, can't afford it. I would love to. I, w I would have also loved if that had been a white mana that I got there instead of a Castle Vantress so I could have gotten down the healers. But you know, <clears throat> beggars can't be choosers. 
Does that thing have the ability to gain haste? I believe so, right? Yeah, okay. Well, the situation just gets worse. Uh, I think we do give up the baby Godzilla here since we know we're going for... What's it called? But it's only reducing that damage by a little bit. I can't, I can't block here. I can't. Oh, shit. But we're going to die if I don't, huh? That's like actually 10 damage. Well, fuck. All right, well, if we're going to die, we might as well kill something. <laughs> or, you, know, you know what I mean. If, <clears throat> if not blocking is going to result in a death, we might as well block something. Is there a way I can actually come back in this game? The only thing I can play here is like Healer's Hawk or potentially Stagnant Inside. I think it's a GG on the game. Pappy Jones, I love the name. You got us. I, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Alright, right back into it. No need to take a break or anything. I'm super excited actually to get into our second deck today. Thin Rear is going to be our next foe. I love what you're what you're bringing to the table here. Um, it's a little it's a little too spicy, but I think I'm going to keep it. I think I can handle the spice. You know what I mean? If we can just draw into a Healer's Hawk, a Baby Godzilla, anything along those lines, will be will be a okay. And we have the Temple of Enlightenment to, to help us scry, so that's good. Is this a self mill deck? Interesting. Well, we're staring down a whole lot of mutate. I really gotta take this card out of the deck. Um, so I'm gonna bottom Mace of the Valiant. Paradise Druid. Our opponent's ramping a little bit, that's okay. I don't mind. Um, again, we don't have any plays here, so because you can't mutate a C Dasher onto nothing, so we're just entering it to have Titan's Nest. Oh, and the the opponent's deck just got that much more interesting. All right, well, we have the mana for the C Dasher. Next turn, we'll have the mana for the Cub Warden, so I'm happy about that one, at the very least. Let's see what they do. They have the Titan's Nest. Triad of the Elysian Grove. They are just all about the mana. What are you? What are you trying to play that's so spicy here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to scare him. I didn't actually plan on blocking. So are we going for the Cub Warden? Good question. Yes. Indeedly so. Over. Better question is, are we swinging in? They definitely get the block off, but we get to gain life. Yeah, I think we're swinging in. All right, well they drew, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say they drew one of the cards they were looking for, but it looks like it was just a Euro, so. You know, maybe that maybe that was a card they were looking for. Maybe not. I guess we'll have to wait and see. We can mutate again next turn onto the Cub Warden and boost up all of our little cat creature tokens. I do enjoy the Huntmaster Liger mutating onto a Cub Warden. I think that's kind of cool. I wish I wish it added a little bit more than just the plus X plus X for the single turn. You know, I wish it added uh, some some other stat, right? Some other text like maybe Vigilance. But if it did that, it might be a little busted, so, you know. Our opponent's getting up a solid wall of creatures. I gotta say, I don't appreciate that one. All right, Fenrir. Let's drive onto the top. Let's see your rock. This is a weird deck. Oh, they have a Bolas of Citadel. Ah. I'm liking it. They're going low. <clears throat> what are you trying to find here, though? They drew a healer's out. 
wish I had known that. Then I could have mutated onto a healer's hog, right? I mean, I suppose I still can here with a Huntmaster Liger. We just don't want their your rock getting in, right? Because that gives them life gain. I think I'm also waiting to do this till next turn. All right, they're gonna get another turn. Not much we can do about it. <clears throat> they might actually get a few more turns. see though oh I don't think swinging in there with anything is the right move because obviously they block your rock to either of the cats and then they gain the life or if I swing in cupboard and they also have the option to block your rock and gain the life so what are they doing here why don't why don't you put it into the graveyard you don't need any more lands, right? Like you have Titan's Nest, you have you have lands down, you have Paradise Druids, you have Dryad, so all your lands are, you know, all lands, right? Yeah. So. Ooh, I just thought of a nice uh, Dryad Nissa deck, by the way. Any hoosers? Um, hello, been rare, buddy, pal. I was, I was really enjoying our match. There we go. Ah, uh, ah. All right, so they got some decisions to make. Whatever's on top of their library can't be that good right if they're using a Euro to draw it out instead of play it. Or maybe it just costs too much, who knows. Gaining six life though, that's uh that's a yikes. I don't think we're winning this matchup, by the way, but I think it's interesting to keep playing to see what our opponent has to offer. At least for a little bit, you know what I mean? If the opponent's bringing some spice, I don't like to to just get up and leave. One, I feel like that's kinda rude. Two, there's no need to jump the gun. So please don't kill my healer's hawk. That's what I'm asking. I see you have some mana reserved over there. I just, just kindly, if you would not uh, kill this creature and with which I am investing so heavily. Fork of War, Finru. They don't have any creatures with reach, do they? I'm not overlooking that. Oftentimes I do. Y'all, y'all know how reach is, though. It's it's really, really in there. Um, so we're swinging with the King Caesar. I don't think we're swinging with the Cub Warden. Even though it can kill the Uroc, it doesn't kill the Euro, so. It is what it is. We're going to draw a card. We're going to gain some life. We're going to see what we can see. If we hit a Time Wipe, that'd be decent, right? No? Okay. <laughs> we can hope. We do have a Time Wipe in the deck. It's just, you know, I think we only have one Time Wipe in the deck, so. It's going to be a matter of getting to it before we die, I suppose. Being able to bounce our King Caesar before it dies, right? Or maybe even bouncing the Cub Warden, right? What's underneath the Cub Warden? A Sea Dasher. Well, this is three creatures. That's only two. But the Cub Warden has the potential to rebuild our board state, right? I don't know. Hopefully, we can we can find the Time Wipe. We do have the Temple of Enlightenment to help us scry next turn, so... At least do that. I don't have a Temple Vantress, which would be super fantastic. Um, any Hoosers. Two Mire Tritons coming down, healing them up quite a bit. And the Euro is going to put them back to 14. Hmm. You put the land <laughs> are they trying to keep themselves from oh okay <laughs> i was like why would you put the land back on top why you're you're a madman 
Ah, you're a genius, Finrear. I love it. I love it. Nice. And GG. That was beautiful. And this is why you stick through those matches. Because sometimes you, you see the, the last play of it all. And you're like, yeah. That was worth it. Skip to my loo. That sounds a little dirty. I'm not going to lie. We are going to keep this hand. I like a Mesa Valiant if we can... Uh, and uh, apparently I've just resolved that it's staying in the deck. <laughs> Never mind. I guess we'll go through in the deck tech wrap up and like, you know, hey, you should probably take this card out. It's fun with Cub Warden, okay? I will say that it's it's extremely fun with Cub Warden. Um, but that's about where it ends, you know? So it's a Lorus enchantment deck, huh? Is that what you're telling me? Come on, Skycat, you can do it. I am gonna swing into the Healer's Hawk, because here's the thing, there's healer, their Healer's Hawk is probably more valuable than our Healer's Hawk, right? And it is a Lotus deck, so. I'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I actually haven't seen anybody <laughs> play a companion, you know? I see people playing companions if that makes sense like right here they're playing waters but i don't actually see them using any companions uh we don't make that block i think right because like that this is nothing and this is nothing but if it's their only creature in hand of course if it's their only creature in hand they're probably not swinging in with it right they want me to get rid of my sky cat and i can't can't figure out why we're gonna let the damage happen surely you don't risk your only creature right in hand surely not uh, I am gonna go ahead and get down Mesa the Valium because I think with what's with what's a brewing in my hand it might actually be better I wish that Temple of Enlightenment was maybe a hollow fountain and I'm not gonna lie because then you know we could play a uh, bah, bah, bah. Play a Healer's Hawk, plus get the Mace of the Valiant onto a creature. Season of Growth coming down for our foe. And that's it. Well, we did get some untapped land, but it's it's blue mana. Well, it still allows us to do what we were going to do, right? Equip this. We're equipping it here, right? We don't want to make our Skycat Sovereign a uh, priority. Of course, if we had equipped it Skycat Sovereign, then could swing in right because it just has more power that's okay now we have something that we can swing in with that's not nearly as valuable as our scott has so it's now our turn to abuse the board state <laughs> another healer's hawk coming down for a foe it's just a healer hawk festival if i get mine down there would literally be five copies of healer's hawks on the board i don't know if i've ever seen that many hawks in one location before sentinel <laughs> All right, so we're doing this. We're both kind of going going for the all-around plays. Outslip. I don't enjoy that one, I gotta say. I know that they may win in the long run unless we can get some, some timely Tom Wipes, right? Ugh, these lands, they're killing me. We might need to go down in lands, honestly. If I play the island, I can Castle Vantress and actually get two scries off, but I think just getting the one scry off, Staggering Insight. Am I playing that on my Skycat Sovereign? It does give it plus one, plus one. So it'll go up to four, five. <clears throat> That's not bad. Yeah, I think I am keeping it. I think I am keeping it. If we play this down, we could actually, this way we get to attack put this on here and swing in because they only have four uh, defense right so we can get through that bravo chance you figured it out but now we don't have anything to defend the healers hawks given they they hit something like an all that glitters right before we could at least chum block well I guess we could still chum block huh but we don't want to sacrifice our sky cats power too much this is a this is a tricky game tricky Tricky situation. <laughs> Another season of growth. Okay, well, you didn't want to see that. You know what you very well could do? You could take out the Mesa Valiant and just add in simple <laughs> removal. Glass Casket, uh, Vanishing Light, anything along those lines. 
We're gonna take the eight damage here. It's unfortunate, but no. Ooh, fantastic. <laughs> you love to see it. That puts it up to a seven seven. It's almost there. It's almost to the point. I guess we can also put down a cat bird. So that, that puts it to an 8-8. Eight eight. We can actually take out their healer's hawk. But they also have an Alslid, so as soon as we would go to, they would obviously protect it. And it's it's gonna get bigger as time goes on. Skip to my Lou, you bastard. Alright, they put Lorders in the hand, but they don't have enough to cast it down quite yet. No attackers, no attackers, no attackers. Please, no attackers. Beautiful. Alright, Skycat Sovereign. You're getting bigger. You're getting better. You're getting better. I gotta say, Skycat with uh, Mace of the Valiant, though, that is really nice. Alright, so our Skycat can go up to 10, 10, 11, 11. Oh, yeah, baby, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> Even if they give protection, like, it's not gonna die, so... Oh, 12, 12, sorry. It's going up to a 12, 12. Beautiful. Get in there, Skycat. And at least it's gaining us a crap ton of life, right? So how are they using their Ouslet here? Do they have some kind of trickery? God's willing. I mean, that's that's like an Ouslet. That's like a one-off Ouslet, right? But we're, we're kind of doing it, right? Because Mace plus Skycat is allowing us. But as soon as they hit a glass casket, which they, they've got to have. Oh, and we're not gaining life. I forget about that because they have protection. We're not dealing any damage. <laughs> uh. We're both at 19-19, though. So that's, uh, you know, a little coincidental, but also kind of interesting. So yeah, maybe, maybe Mace stays. I don't know. I guess it really depends on what uh, what you're going for. Another Sentinel's Eyes, and they're, they're drawing out the wazoo. <laughs> Surprised I've not seen another all that glitters. Healer's Hawk. More Scrudge. If we can just hit a Time Wipe, that would be lovely i would like for their lotus to also be on the board when we hit that time wipe though so i guess i'm being a little bit uh a little bit picky right if you could just perfectly top deck me a time wipe that would be great <laughs> flaring ages isn't great for us because it allows them to tap our our large skycat sovereign but we have a ton of other creatures right to to defend with i don't believe they have any trample on their deck we'll have to see all that glitters. Though, of course they could, right? What is that, uh, what is that card in the green mana? Allows you to draw a card and gives trample. Y'all know what I'm saying. Anyways, that's a, that's a freaking really big healer sock, bro. Or a bra, you know, whichever. Ah, and then they name white. It's a GG. They got to there. They better, they better. They got there. Oh no, 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 nice, nice. <laughs> I always forget it. Opponents always forget it. Whew. Skip to my Lou, the shame scoop. Alrighty, you made it all the way through the matches. First and foremost, thank you. Uh, if you enjoyed, which you know I'm assuming you did, if you just watched me play Magic for an hour, uh, be sure to click that like button down below and subscribe if you're new here. Of course, click that bell icon that pops out afterwards so you can get notifications whenever I post videos and posts and all that great stuff. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments. As always, I'll try to get to them when I can. Um, and then furthermore, if you're looking to catch us play these decks live, hop over to twitch.tv forward slash Dr. Spillikin. And if you're looking for a Discord community to join up with, hop down in the description of any video and click on that link and it'll send you, you know, that way to Discord. Anyways, on to this deck tech wrap up. So if you're looking to protect your creatures and Karametrics just isn't hitting it for you, you don't really like the enchantment orders, you'd rather go for the mutate. I recommend throwing in God's Willing. It's fantastic. It will fill in that same slot. It'll allow you to scry and, uh, 
yeah, you know, it doesn't play excellently with enchantment ores as you have that ability to bounce the ores off your creature if you choose the wrong color. But, you know, if you're going to take out Karametras and all that stuff, I highly recommend playing it. Johnny's Pride Mate, this deck actually has a lot of life gain. You know, Dovin, the Healer Socks, the Staggering Insights, the Cub Wardens. There's there's life gain peppered in everywhere. So uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's worth throwing in a Johnny's Pride Mate. You can mutate onto it. it it's really nice. Now, let's say you do want to double down on the enchantment ores and all that great stuff. All that glitters works fantastically. Dovin Softers are also gonna be you <laughs> boost this up. Uh, Mace of the Valiant boosts this up. So you know, you can take a little 1-1 one, one Thopter and get it to 10-10 or 11-11 very quickly uh, with an all-back glitter. So, again, another idea to try out if you're looking to lean more into the Enchantment Wars. Also, if you are, I recommend Banishing Light. It's great removal. It's 3 mana. You could exile any target non-land permanent. So anything that's, you know, well, not a land. Planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, creatures, you name it, it hits it. Uh, Teferi's Time Twist is a very awesome bit of saving your mutate creatures in a in a world full of board wipes, right? So Teferi's Time Twist is going to bounce whatever mutate creature you have. They're not going to come back clustered and mutated. No, no, they're going to come back all separated out. So say you have a King Caesar with a Cub Warden mutated onto it and a Dreamtail Heron. Instead of just getting back the 3-4 of the King Caesar, you're going to get back the 3-4, the 3-5, and the 3-4 flying. Um, all for two mana, and you get to avoid the board wipe, so... <clears throat> You know, it's it's awesome. Anyways, I don't know why you'd have King Caesar on top, but you get what I'm saying. Depose, deploy. If you're looking, again, to play more into the all the glitters and all that sort of enchantment aura stuff, this is a fantastic card. The first part allows you to sort of tempo out your opponent, tap target creature, draw a card. kind of cycles itself. The second part allows you to gain life, create two colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens, which, again, is going to help you boost up that all the glitters and the Mace of the Valiant. So, you know, it's good, and it's only an uncommon... <clears throat> which means it's very, very cheap. If you're going to go more into the Thopters and more into all the flying stuff, Winged Words, very cheap, very awesome uh, card draw. Two mana, essentially, if you are going into the Flyers, right? And you get to draw two cards. So two mana, draw two. Yeah, sign me up pretty much always, right? Imperial Eagle is along those same lines. If you're going to go for Flyers, well, why not boost them all up, right? Imperial Eagle allows you to give all your other creatures with flying plus one plus one so the thopters the we've been through this the sky cats y'all know what i'm saying i would be a little remiss if i don't mention teferi time raveler and an azorius deck if you're looking to make the deck more competitive i'll say right uh squeeze squeeze it to fairy time raveler and we all have different mixed feelings about him you know sometimes we love him sometimes we hate him but we can't deny that he is fantastic in almost every azorius deck out there so throw him in there Pouncing Shore Shark, a mutate creature I don't give near enough credit to. This card is amazing, and I've been seeing it played so much here recently that I, I couldn't go without, you know, mentioning it here. So, for four mana and flash, you can mutate this creature down. It's going to be able, it's going to be able, it's going to allow you to be able to bounce target creature your opponent controls to its owner sand every time it mutates, which means every time you're getting that C Dasher down or the Cub Warden down or whatever it is, you're bouncing stuff back to your opponent's hand. And it's really going to help you tempo them out, which is kind of what this deck is all about, right? Most of the time with Azorius, it's not... It, it's mostly about tempo, we'll say, right? For, for the large majority. There is Azorius control, but you're rarely ever going to see uh, Azorius aggro unless it's Flyers, I suppose, and then it's still not... Too much aggro is just getting lucky. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to pretty much do it for the deck. Tech or deck wrap up. <clears throat> As always, thanks everybody for showing up, showing out, showing your support. This is the third time I've tried to record the intro and outro for this video. So, yeah, if I miss something, I do apologize. Please just let me know. Uh, you know, it's a little frustrating <laughs> when you go to record something and you leave the mute button on. And so you just wah, 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 the entire time. <laughs> Anyways, thanks once again. Hope you all have a great night, great morning, great afternoon, day, night, whatever. You know, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Y'all know what I'm saying. I'll see y'all later tonight or tomorrow. Peace.